During the Tudor period, there are a number of very high-profile and powerful famous families. Many of them would fight for supremacy over the king and queen's courts, and one of these families was the Seymours. Jane Seymour would go on to marry King Henry VIII and became the king's third of six wives, but Jane sadly died following childbirth. She had given Henry VIII the son he greatly wanted in Edward VI, his successor, but after the notorious Tudor king's death, things changed greatly. Two of Jane's brothers would vie for power over the young King Edward, and ultimately Edward Seymour, the uncle of the king, would become the Lord Protector. But he had a brother, another one of the king's uncles, who was intensely jealous, and had a rather dark side. But Thomas Seymour, the uncle of Edward VI, would be executed in brutal fashion. Join us today as we look at this, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. Thomas Seymour was a younger brother of Edward, who became the Lord Protector, but he was linked to the crown through his sister's marriage to Henry VIII. This made Thomas also a king's uncle, and Thomas Seymour during the reign of Henry was an ambassador. In 1538 he was sent to become an ambassador at the French court, and he was responsible for meeting Anne of Cleves, the fourth wife of Henry VIII, and preparing her for marriage with the king. Seymour met with her in Calais on the 13th of December 1539, and after this he was dispatched to meet with King Ferdinand I of Hungary on another diplomatic mission to try and secure the support for the conflict against the Scots and the French that Henry would start. Whilst here, Thomas was comfortable and he remained in Vienna in Austria for some years, and he then became an ambassador inside the court of the Habsburg rulers. He was then appointed as a marshal of the English army inside of the Netherlands as war was close, and he was seen as a skilled leader of the army. He had helped in summer 1543 to capture and destroy a number of castles, and despite Jane Seymour's death, Thomas Seymour was still favoured by the king, and he did get a boost at court and also some reward of land from Henry VIII. But it would be his brother Edward who would become the more significant Seymour sibling, following Henry VIII's death in January 1547. When the king died, his sixth wife Catherine Parr was left as the most well-off woman in England, and she was also seen as an eligible woman by Thomas Seymour. The pair before had been linked romantically before she married Henry VIII, and the two did have a past. As the successor Edward VI was just a boy, a regency council was established, with Edward Seymour being at the top of this as the Lord Protector, and he was a key advisor to the young boy King. Thomas Seymour was also known as the first Baron Seymour of Sudley, but this was nowhere near as powerful as his brother. Edward Seymour was practically running the country, being able to govern whilst the king was so young. But this made Thomas incredibly jealous, and he also began to hate his own brother, and become very spiteful towards him. But Thomas did have a dark side before this. He was linked to the grooming of Princess Elizabeth, the future Queen Elizabeth I, who whilst under the care of Catherine Parr, was subject to a number of Seymour's inappropriate advances. He acted inappropriately towards a young teenage girl, in a way that Elizabeth's governess saw as unacceptable and disgusting. He was reported to have been in the young girl's bedchamber in just a nightshirt, and then he tickled the princess inappropriately at times. Catherine Parr also joined in at one point holding Elizabeth, while Seymour hugged her, but Catherine just played this off as horseplay and innocent fun. Elizabeth was sent away after to another house, and Catherine Parr did die from childbirth shortly after. Seymour then dreamed of having another high-profile marriage, but this time to the much younger and important Princess Elizabeth, but this never occurred. Thomas was obsessed with his brother's power over Edward VI, and he tried to oust his brother from the position of Lord Protector, and it was clear to everyone at court that Thomas began to hate his brother, and at meetings despite being involved in them, he tried to one-up him, and constantly sought to outdo him. He thought that a marriage to Elizabeth could usurp his brother's position, making him more powerful and more favourable but this, as mentioned, did not occur. Following the death of Catherine Parr, Seymour went further off the rails, and he tried to convince the young boy King that he did not need someone to protect his throne, and that he should just rule himself, being capable of doing so. Thomas then planned a rebellion, and at the time his brother was in Scotland fighting the Scots, and Edward Seymour the Protector did invade in summer 1547, and left the court whilst this was happening. Whilst he was away, Thomas began to speak negatively about his brother, and his behaviour became even more irate and suspicious, and he had been advised to watch his tone a number of times. 
Thomas had become the Lord High Admiral, meaning he was in control of the English Navy, and he asked their support if a rebellion did break out. Thomas even consulted with some pirates based on the West Coast, even though it was his job to defeat pirates and make sure they did not cause chaos. So Thomas was working with his enemies to bring down his own brother, and at court this did not remain a secret. In 1548, he was summoned to court to explain himself and his actions, and his brother was even willing to vouch for him and help him escape possible imprisonment, but Thomas did not show up. But ultimately his plan was carried out on the evening of the 16th of January 1549. Thomas Seymour was found trying to break into King Edward VI's apartments during the middle of the night, and it's believed he was trying to seize control of the boy King and take custody of him, in a move similarly to how Richard III imprisoned the princes in the tower. Thomas entered through the privy garden and disturbed one of the king's dogs, and because the spaniel kept barking, Seymour killed it, shooting it. After he was arrested and seized, the following day he was sent to the Tower of London, and was accused of treason. He had ultimately been caught outside the king's bedroom, with a loaded pistol, and some put two and two together, and believed he was going to assassinate the young King Edward. A huge number of 33 counts of treason were brought in front of Thomas, and some of the charges included being charged with endeavouring to get his own hands on the government of the king, plotting to take the king into custody, having 10,000 men available for rebellion, having married the queen scandalously soon after the king's death, and even bribing members of the Privy Council. Just one of these charges carried the death penalty, and it was obvious what would happen to Thomas Seymour. He was sentenced to death and it would be his own brother Edward, whose signature was on the death warrant. There was not much opposition to this, as Edward Seymour's wife even said she would leave him if he did not condemn his own brother for his actions. A bill of attainder was brought against Thomas and it said, considering that he is a member so unnatural, unkind and corrupt, and such a heinous offender of your majesty and your laws, as he cannot be suffered to remain in the body of your grace's commonwealth, but to the extreme danger of your highness, and it is too dangerous an example that such a person so much bound and so forgetful of it should remain amongst us. He was too adjudged and attained of high treason, and shall suffer such pains of death as in cases of high treason have been accustomed. Thomas Seymour, even whilst held inside the Tower of London, tried to reach out to Princess Elizabeth to save him, and he sent her a message sewn into a pair of velvet shoes. But she didn't do anything to help, and Seymour had come to terms with the fact he was going to die. He prayed regularly also to God, and arranged his affairs, saying that his daughter would live with the Dowager Duchess of Suffolk at Grimsthorpe Castle, and his wealth would be given automatically to the crown, as was common with traitors who were executed. On the 20th of March 1549, he was taken out of the Tower of London and was led on the short walk towards Tower Hill, the public beheading spot, where figures such as Thomas Cromwell and Sir Thomas More were executed. He walked flanked by guards, and as he was led up to the scaffold, he refused to confess to his crimes to the crowd. It was normal for the condemned to apologise to God and to admit their crimes, but Seymour refused to do this. It was said that whether he be saved or not, I shall leave it to God, but surely he was a wicked man, and the realm is rid of him. The crowds there were huge to see his execution, and it did not go as straightforward as it could. Seymour laid his head on the block, and the executioner then stood over him with the axe. It did not take one swing. The first only slightly severed his neck from his body, before a second stroke was needed to take the head clean off. His head was then shown to the crowd, before his body was taken back to the Tower of London, where it was buried inside the chapel of St Peter at Vincula. But Thomas Seymour is considered today as one of the most villainous figures of the Tudor period, being a man who tried to kidnap a king, and also was involved in grooming a future queen. He was a man who married for power, and his actions were criticised greatly. Despite being very jealous of his brother, his brother Edward Seymour, would later also make the journey to Tower Hill, where he was also executed by axe. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.